class. Now, a filmmaker, a famous filmmaker a while back said something about everything you need to know about film, you can learn in about a week. He was being generous. You can learn it in 10 minutes. Set your watches. We'll be out of here in 10, kids. Okay, so you want to be a filmmaker? Yes. yes. Wrong. You are a filmmaker. The moment you think about that you want to be a filmmaker, you're that. Make yourself a business card that says you're a filmmaker, pass them out to your friends. As soon as you get that over with and you got it in your mind that you're one, you'll be one. You'll start thinking like one. Don't dream about being a filmmaker. You are a filmmaker. Now let's get down to business. Let's play. What you need to learn was that being creative is not enough in this business. You have to become technical. Creative people are born creative. You're lucky. Technical people, however, can never be creative. It's something they'll never get. You can't buy it, find it, study it. You're born with it. Too many creative people don't want to learn how to be technical. So what happens? They become dependent on technical people. Become technical. You can learn that. If you're creative and technical, you're unstoppable. Experience. Do you have experience in movies? You do, right. You watch movies. Now you need to have movie experience. You're not going to learn from just watching movies. You'll learn some things. You'll learn more picking up a camera by making your own films, your own mistakes. Mistakes don't have to be mistakes. Everything is subjective. A mistake to one person is actually a piece of art to someone else. Hide behind that. Tell everyone it's art. You can get away with a lot. Start with a screenplay. Does anyone here know how to write? No. Good. Everyone else writes the same way. Start writing your way. That makes you unique. You can take writing classes, that's good, but don't bother to go to film school or you'll be making films like everyone else. We want to see new films. How do you write a script? Well, you obviously don't have a lot of money or you wouldn't be in my class. So you want to make a movie? You don't want to spend a lot. You're going to come up with problems every day on your set. You can get rid of the problem one or two ways. You can do it creatively or you can wash it away with a money hose. You have no money, you got no hose. So let's make a screenplay for a movie that you can actually make without having to make your parents poor. To make a cheap movie. How do you make a cheap movie? Look around you. What do you have around you? Take stock in what you have. Your father owns a liquor store. Make a movie about a liquor store. You have a dog? Make a movie about your dog. Your mom works in a nursing home. Make a movie about a nursing home. When I did El Mariachi, I had a turtle. I had a guitar case. I had a small town. And I said, well, I'll make a movie around that. How do you visualize a movie? On storyboards, you can do that. You can pre-visualize your movie and draw them out. What you should really do is just make a blank screen for yourself and sit there and watch your movie. Close your eyes and stare at this. Imagine a screen, imagine your movie. Shot for shot, cut for cut. Sit there, close your eyes and get rid of everybody, get rid of all the thoughts in your head, accept your movie and watch your movie. Is it too slow? Is it too fast? Is it funny? Does it make sense? Watch it and then write down what you see. Write down the shots that you see and then just go get those shots. Equipment. Okay, let's go to equipment. The worse the better. You don't want anything too fancy. Remember, this is your first movie. You're not Spielberg yet. I used this one for El Mariachi. Almost the same one. This is a 16M. I used a 16S, but this is exactly what I had. It helped me move fast because it was light. It was very noisy, so I had to do the sound in a wacky way. But this thing here would cost you about $2,000. Don't spend that kind of money. Find some monkey who owns one. I found somebody who had one of these sitting around. He wasn't using it. I borrowed it from him. I shot my own movie. This is a nice stand. It's a very solid stand. You know what's going to happen? The camera's going to stay on the stand. You're going to just keep it there because it's so nice. Meaning your movie's going to look stiff. Take it off of there. Sit in a wheelchair. Push yourself around. Get some energy in your film. That's the great thing about first films is they have so much life and so much energy. Big productions can't even duplicate that energy because they've got too good a stand. They've got too much crew and everything's really smooth and polished and it's lifeless. Add life to your film by taking, getting rid of the fancy stuff. Too good, too heavy, too good. Just use your hands. Better. Here's a light meter. This isn't the right one. I broke my other one. This is a spot meter. That's okay, but it's too fancy. You just need one with a little white dome on it. Point it to your subject. Read the light. Look at the number on your light meter. Remember, the light meter is your friend. Feed that into the, to the lens and the iris, and then you're set. You can start shooting. Don't overlight. With the mariachi, I had two lights. Regular light bulbs, they were uh, balanced for indoor films, so it looked fine. In fact, everyone said the lighting looked moody because there was very little light. So again, your mistakes, your shortcomings, suddenly becomes artistic expression. 
Finally, post-production. When you finish shooting your movie, what do you do? These are your friends, my friends. Video editing systems, computer editing systems, anything like that. It's immediate, it's easy, it's cheap. Do not cut on film. Film is your enemy. You may be shooting on film, but don't cut on film. If any of you want to cut on film, get out of my class right now. Go spend $20,000 on a real film school and do that. You'll never get a job, though, believe me. Everything's on computers or video these days. Film is slow, film is expensive, film is not creative. Film takes too long. You get one of these little moviolas, and it's such a pain in the butt to get the thing to cut. You're not even going to try any options. You're not even going to try to expand. You use video, it's fast, it's immediate. Cut on tape, that's what I did. I shot mariachi for nothing. I cut on this video machine. I edited on video. I had a three-quarter inch master that looked beautiful because the negative was transferred right to tape. There was no middleman. So it looked like 35 millimeter, clean, pristine, colorful. I made VHS copies of this, sent them out all over Hollywood. I never made a film print. Waste of money. You have to string them up, they get worn out, they're expensive. They're copies of your negative. You don't want that. You don't want copies of your negative. You want your negative on tape where people can duplicate it and watch it and get you work. Okay, so you've made your movie. You've cut it. You've got it out. People want you. What do you do? First thing you want to do is get an agent right away. Hollywood is full of sharks. You need a shark working for you. These guys go and they get you the best deals. They get you the best prices. They get you the best movies. But you've learned is something no one else has, how to make a movie dirt cheap. No one else in Hollywood knows how to do that. You guys can make them cheap, you guys can make them better, don't get swallowed in the system. Take advantage of your position. Now, I make movies that are still low budget, but they look like big budget movies because I learned the techniques that I just showed you today. So what you want to do is go into Hollywood, make lower budget movies, do whatever kind of movie you want, they'll look big, They'll give you more freedom, more money, final cut, make your own posters, and that's where you want to be. If you make a big budget movie, don't be fooled. Money doesn't get you anything. Suddenly you're working for somebody. Suddenly they start telling you what actors to put in your movie because they're spending so much money, they have to make a lot of money back. If you keep your budget slow, you don't have to make back that kind of money. It helps to have money, but it's not everything. What it is is power, though. The more money you make in that town, the more people respect you, the more freedom you get. That's really what you want. The money is a means to an end. I don't have all day. I've got to go back and do my own films. So I hope you guys learned something today. I hope you grab some of these cameras and go shoot something of your own. I hope you write down the ideas that you have, the dreams that you have. Stop aspiring. Start doing. Get to it. See you in Hollywood. Be scary.